Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to the Game Feed. Of course, my name is Panzo6, and today uh, we're going to go ahead and continue last week's um, episode by talking about the other conferences that are going on this year's E3. Uh, now, excuse me, I'm going to go ahead and say this. Uh, just, just so that you guys know, um, last couple days for me has been really, really rough, so I'll try not to keep it keep it really sappy, and we'll talk about it on Let's Play, so you might notice that I seem a little down, but um, if you guys have been following me on Twitter or Facebook, you may already know what's been going on. But, let's go ahead and make this um, not sappy. Let's go ahead and make this um, really, really awesome, maybe? I don't know. Um, so, as you guys know, E3 is a show where you get some of the biggest gaming companies and they come in and show off the things you'll be buying for the next couple of years with game announcements, hardware announcements, and movies, possibly, I don't know. <laughs> but um, last week we talked about Sony, Microsoft, and Nintendo. So today we're talking about EA, Bethesda, a PC gaming show, and Ubisoft. So let's go ahead and start with Bethesda. Um, last year we got a surprise. Bethesda had their first... Um, big live events, I think is the first one I've had in years. And this is where they announced um, Fallout 4, uh, they showed off Doom, uh, a little bit more Elder Scrolls, um, Tamriel Edition, uh, Dishonored 2, and I didn't think they would come out and do another one this year unless they have some big things planned. Now there's the obvious, um, maybe more uh, maybe Doom expansions, uh, Fallout 4 expansions, uh, Outer Scrolls, and they'll maybe talk about Dishonored. But let's talk about some properties that Bethesda has control of that may get shown off. And these things, I think they get easily overlooked. I do apologize. My phone just completely went <laughs> crazy. Um, <laughs> but, um, yeah, there it goes again. All right. Turn it off. But anyways... Let's go ahead and talk about Bethesda. And I want to give you my input, what I think, and we'll do some wild cards, just like we did last time. So, first and foremost, they're going to show off uh, Doom. They're going to show it off, and they're going to announce single-player content. Um, I think that's going to happen because the season pass has mainly uh, been concentrated for multiplayer. Um, I think they're going to announce maybe Doom expansions. That's going to be it a few big expansions for uh, the single player campaign. Now I've been playing Doom for the last couple weeks. Well, not a couple weeks, it's been about a week. And I love it. If you guys seen my uh, quick play where I gave you my impressions of it and shown some gameplay, you guys know I absolutely love the game. Um, now the next thing I think they may announce is a sequel to Wolfenstein The New Order. Uh, the Wolfenstein New Order in Old Blood was really fantastic. It was a surprise when it came out. And that made me, gave me hope for Doom. So I'm hoping, I'm just hoping that we'll see another Wolfenstein game. Maybe, even if it's just a little trailer. Um, I, I would be excited about that because the game was really good. Um, it felt good. The guns were meaty. Um... And just like Doom, it felt like an old school shooter. It didn't feel, you know, overly saturated with modern um, <laughs> combat mechanics that you see in Call of Duty and stuff. And the story was really good. It was fun. It was fun, both of them. Uh, the old boy was really good, too. And I hope to see that. So another one um, is The Evil Within. This is Tango Softworks um, guy who worked on... Uh, the original Resident Evil games, all the way up to Resident Evil 4. Uh, I think it's Shinji Mikami. I think. I could be completely wrong. I should... You know, before I <laughs> say names of people, I should probably look these things up. But, no, I, I think uh, I think we'll see a sequel announced for The Evil Within. Um, I thought The Evil Within was really good. It did have its shortcomings. But as far as a survival horror game... It worked. It worked on all levels, um, and some of the like concentrate uh, concentrations. <laughs> I can't even talk today. Um, well, some of the enemy encounters was insane. Um, like the dude had the crazy safe on his head. Uh, it kept on when he died. He came back. 
the crazy looking ring witch long fingered crawly thing. Ugh. That thing gave me nightmares. That thing was disgusting. And just some of the some of the like situations you get in. Like when I played the game originally, which I haven't played the season like the expansions, which I should probably do that. Um there's a part of the game where um you're in this like a little it's like it's a it's a little room. Um when I say little, I mean it's like a kill box basically. They put you in and they just overwhelm you with enemies. Now the evil friend already has problems when it comes to ammo management. So you run out of ammo really, really quick. And you know, I went and I killed as many of these things as I can, and it gets to the point where they'll have the dude with the chainsaw. It's a big burly burly fucker. And he'll come after you. Now I die like several times, and then you know I had to keep on repeat and repeat. And I have this on a stream as it was like a highlight from a long time ago. And it was probably one of my favorite moments ever in gaming. Just it was so satisfying because I was completely out of ammo, and the only way I could you know do any damage to this thing is hit it with a knife run around like a jackass and <laughs> go up these go up a ladder and rinse repeat. Well, I did this a few times and I think it took about 20 minutes just to kill this one guy. And like I said, I had no ammo. I just had a knife and I ran like a jackass. <laughs> so um we get to the point of the stream and the the chainsaw guy was climbing up the ladder. Now my, my thing was I kept on slashing him, slashing him, slashing him while I was coming up and try to kick him down. And once he got on top of the platform, I would jump down, rinse, repeat. And finally, finally, I killed him. Like he was on the ladder. And I finally, one last knife slash just killed the guy. And it gave me a little bit of ammo and to go into the next room where it does these turret mounted, I think that was like flamethrowers or something like that. And it just, it was brutal. I, I think the Evil Within, uh, in terms of how the mechanics worked uh, versus uh, the story, um, I, I think it was great. And I'd love to see another Evil Within. Now, of course, we'll probably see some expansion stuff for uh, Elder Scrolls Tamriel Unlimited. I wouldn't be surprised um, if the game becomes completely free to play. Um, we've already seen, you know, implementations of free-to-play mechanics in there, so I would be surprised. I would not be surprised if we see something like that. Um, we'll probably see some gameplay for Dishonored 2, which I'm really excited for that because I like the first Dishonored. Um, I I never got a chance to get too big into the Thief um, franchise, and my um, first time playing Thief was um, the reboot. And I and recently, it was, it's been a while back, I bought the original games and I played some. And um, I, I really like Dishonored. It was, it was really, really fun. And I can't wait to play Dishonored too. I think it'll be good. Um, now, here's a property we may have all completely forgot about. And this would make a lot of sense. I um, <clears throat> And I think... I, I wouldn't be shocked if they announced this. So we've already seen Doom. We've seen Wolfenstein. These old school shooters from back in the day had strong single player campaigns. And some had multiplayer, which was really good. And one in particular, which I'm going to go ahead and talk about, still has a pretty big audience for multiplayer. And that's Quake. Um, we have Quake 3 Arena Live, which uh, you can get on Steam. It used to be on browsers. Um, so, I'm thinking what's going to happen is they're going to announce a Quake reboot. And it's just going to be just like Wolfenstein and Stein and Doom. And it's going to be done by the same... I bet you it will be done by Machine Head. Um, <clears throat> and they're going to announce this game. And people are going to be like, oh wow, it looks amazing. And they'll probably give it a lot of shit at first because I'll show the multiplayer and it may or may not be up to par but I think what's going to happen is they're going to show this game it's going to have a strong single player component then they'll show the multiplayer and the multiplayer is going to be a full on arena style shooter 
and it's not going to have any modern conventions um, like the new Doom does. And I, I think that's going to happen. I think we're going to see it. Um, I almost guarantee we're going to see a Quake reboot. I don't hear anybody ever talking about Quake. So I think they're going to announce Quake. And I'll be really happy if they do. Uh, of course, they'll talk probably more, more Fallout expansions and uh, so on and so on. But let's go ahead and do a couple wild cards. I don't know of many I could really talk about what I could think. These are just wild things, which the whole list is kind of guessing. But um, one of the wild cards for this is I'm going to say they are going to go ahead and release uh, Fallout New Vegas uh, backwards compatible for the 360. They'll go ahead and announce that. Um, which it's not really too far, too far fetched. Uh, another wild card is probably they will announce a <clears throat> bundle that has, um, I'm going to say all the Quake games and all the Doom games and all the Wolfenstein games in one big bundle. Um, you can buy on Steam, Xbox One, PlayStation 4. I think you're going to see that. That may or may not happen, but it's, I think that's a good guess. I think it'll be one price, so like 60 bucks. Uh, well, not not including Doom and uh, Wolf, and, and they may do Wolf and Sign, but I, I bet I don't think so. They'll probably give you like a coupon for so much off of Doom, but I think we might see some kind of bundle or maybe a Skyrim um, HD remaster. That's possible, that's been in a rumor mill for a while. All right, so next, let's go ahead and talk about EA. EA, we all know they're going to come out with, you know, of course their sports franchises. We'll be hearing about Battlefield, uh, <coughs> Mass Effect, um, Mirror's Edge Catalyst, as well as a few other things. But let's go ahead and talk a little bit about it. Um, and I'll, we'll try to keep this one a little bit shorter. So EA will come out, and the first thing they'll uh, talk about is Battlefield 1. Um, and I'll show off more gameplay, uh, some of the single player footage, and I'll talk about the deal with Xbox One, where content will come first to that, as well as the EA Access platform. Um, I think that's going to happen for sure. That's There's no doubt that that will happen. Um, so we'll definitely see that. Uh, the next thing we'll see is Mass Effect Andromeda. We'll get our first... Uh, maybe five, ten minutes uh, playthrough of some of the gameplay, as well as a little bit of a trailer, and they'll probably go ahead and announce a season's pass, because that's usually what EA does. We'll get to see that, and then uh, we'll see some Mirror's Edge Cattles gameplay, um, and I think they'll probably announce, they'll probably announce a new IP. Uh, they'll talk about the Star Wars games that's coming down the pipeline, especially the ones with Visceral. Um, the single player, I hope they, you know, pretty much come out and say, hey, we're working on Star Wars 1313. Surprise! Surprise! That's coming out. Okay, so then I'll move on to the boring stuff. What's boring to me, some people like this, is the sports stuff. Um, and they'll bring out some big superstar, some old superstar from back in the day, and they'll chit-chat, and they'll be really boring. <laughs> but... I think the last thing they're going to announce is they're going to go ahead and announce, and this is a complete, I'm going to go ahead and throw this in as a wild card, okay, because I don't really have too much else I can think of um, that can justify this. So we'll go ahead and say for the wild cards for EA, they're going to go ahead and announce Medal of Honor, and we're going to go back to World War II setting, and... Um, it's not going to be worked on DICE, it's going to be worked on possibly by a newer studio um, it, that we haven't heard yet. And I think they're going to try to revitalize Medal of Honor. We're going to go back to World War II. Um, I think that may happen, maybe. So that that's a possibility. All right, the next thing would be, um, this is another wild, wild card, is a Dead Space sequel. Or did that space remaster for the Xbox One, PS4, and PC? That's possible. That's possible. I can see that happening. Um, 
If not, they may announce the games coming to backwards compatible, uh, backwards compatibility for the Xbox One, which we already have Dead Space One, so that may happen too. Um, as far as that goes, we'll go ahead and do one more wild card for that. So Dice, during the one, once they're talking about Battlefield One, they will go ahead and announce that you can play the open beta right now. Um, and they'll open it up let people try the game during E3 for about maybe four or five days. That way they can test the servers and we'll get a taste of it. That may happen. <laughs> All right, so let's go ahead and move to Ubisoft. Um, Ubisoft has been having a rough couple of years lately, especially with some of the games that's been coming out, Assassin's Creed especially, and I think they're still kind of recovering from the Unity problems and the Watch Dogs being not terrible but it wasn't nearly as good as they promised. Um, so with Ubisoft, they will probably do a couple things. So we'll probably see um, some more content coming for Rainbow Six Siege, which I really, really like that game. That was fun. Um, it, it's, it's just really good. If you guys get a chance to play Siege, check it out. Um, I think they'll announce that. They're going to announce maybe a new Splinter Cell. They may reboot Splinter Cell. That, that could be possible, maybe. I don't know. They may do that. Uh, they'll probably show some footage for the next Assassin's Creed. Uh, and they'll talk about the movie. But they won't go too much in depth with Assassin's Creed. They'll say it's coming. And they may show a small teaser. Um, so we can kind of expect that. Um, let see. I don't think they'll talk about the crew. I don't think that's doing any well and uh, I would imagine they're going to spend a lot of time with um, the new Ghost Recon. I think that's a possibility. We'll probably see an announcement trailer for Watch Dogs 2. Um, uh, the rumors have been uh, they've shown off possibly could be a new main character um, and they say that the tone of the game will be a whole lot more different than the its predecessor which um, the story and the tone for that game was kind of kind of shitty, I'd imagine. Um, <laughs> it, it wasn't that good. I mean, the, the gameplay was fun, but the story was... It's, it, it just felt like um, overly, overly, overly boring, um, overly personal, um, and overly serious to the point that it was, uh, felt like a comedy. <laughs> Um, but I, I think it's safe to say those properties will all get shown off. They'll probably show off a new IP, um, and I have no clue. It'll probably be within the Tom Clancy universe, but maybe not. It might be something surprise. So let's go ahead and do some wild cards for this one. Okay, Beyond Good and Evil 2. They'll announce that game. There'll be a gameplay for it. It'll come out 2017 holiday. Uh, actually, it may not come out holiday. I think what's going to happen, it's going to be episodic. So let's let's go ahead and change this wild card. So Beyond the Good and Evil 2 will come out, and it'll be episodic game. It'll be one big episodic game, and uh, there'll be six chapters uh, for you know fourteen ninety nine each, or you can buy a season pass for uh, sixty bucks. Um, so let's go ahead and say that they'll they'll probably go that route with it. Um, so there's that. Okay, what's another thing? They'll announce the Splinter Cell movie. They'll show off some footage, possibly. Uh, or they'll say, oh, it's in production. It's coming soon. And the last thing is a new IP. The new IP will be a survival horror-esque game um, in the vein of P.T., uh, Resident Evil, um, and some other games. I think they may announce some kind of horror game. That's a possibility, but that's a wild card, and we'll leave it at that. All right, so we're almost 20 minutes in, and we got one more to talk about, and that's the PC. Uh, we got the PC gaming show, which I'm not really sure what this is all going to be about. So this is all right here. This is all speculation because I'm not sure what it will be, but let's go ahead and we'll, we'll go ahead and get a few things um, and so, I don't know if they'll bring out maybe Valve, um, maybe a Razer, 
some of the bigger PC manufacturers. They'll talk about Steam machines. Um, there'll be a lot of talk about VR, um, and there'll be some new contenders in the field for VR develop VR development and possibly hardware. Okay, Let's see, we'll hear some Nvidia stuff about their new uh, GTX 1080 card. Then we may see AMD talk about their big card. I don't think this is going to be a big conference. I think this is going to be um, maybe a lot of mini conferences put into one, uh, but I don't know. It could just be stuff that's on the show floor, but I think there will be something, uh, something small. Um, <clears throat> it might be so Microsoft will talk about maybe team with Valve. Now this would be weird. This would be weird. And I doubt this will happen considering the fact that Valve has uh, the Steam OS, and they want that to be a big thing, Steam OS. But maybe, just maybe, since Windows, Windows 10 is starting to play really good with PC gamers in terms of uh, cross-play, um, a lot of people are not excited about the UWP program. Um, but, but I think it's going to get more, they're going to have a clearer vision of it and you'll get to know more about it and it's not going to be complete shit. Um, all right, wild cards for this one. And this one's my, uh, this, I'm going to guess really hard on this and it's not going to happen because this will never happen. Gabe Newell gets up on a stage. So let's go ahead and paint the picture here. All right, special guest. Um, maybe um, after talking about some of the uh, steam machines and stuff, Maybe one of the bigger companies is like, oh, yeah, we have uh, Valve, lead head of Valve, a CEO. Gabe Newell would like to stay, take the stage for some special announcements. All right. Everybody is anticipating. They're all looking. You know, the thing that's coming to their mind is something that, you know, ends with the number three. So, Gat, so he gets up there. He's like, Steam is doing really great. The Steam platform is really awesome. The HTC Vive is being it's extraordinary when we can barely keep up with the man um, the steam machines are doing pretty well um, and you guys might be wondering why am I up here me Gabe Newell of valve all right so let's go ahead and get the cats out of the bag all right half-life 3 is coming it's coming next year and he shows a trailer for it. So that, there's there's an abruption in the whole E3 floor. Everybody stops what they're doing. Doesn't matter what part of the the uh, veneer they're at. They get messages on their phones. They get announcements on the intercoms. Wherever they're at, whatever they're doing, they'll stop playing their games, and they'll all just be stunned. There'll be a golden aura around. Gabe Newell. He says, not only that, Portal 3 is coming. Oh, God. So there's another number three game right there. Coming out next year. All right. Everybody's, their palms are sweaty. They're looking at their phones. They're tweeting out. The internet is exploding at this point. All right. All right. So that we already said the biggest thing. We said Half-Life 3. So what else could there be? Left 4 Dead 3 is also coming out next year. Why are these games coming out next year? This is a sign of the apocalypse, right? So, all right, we have Half-Life 3. We have Portal 3. We have Left 4 Dead 3. All coming out next year. With HCC Vibe support. All right, all right. Every, every, all the news outlets are freaking out at this moment. The internet is exploding. There's nothing left. All the bandwidth is being used. This, you look up in the sky, and there's there's an eclipse, a solar eclipse. The skies get dark. So. Gabe Newell takes to the stage for one last moment. He looks, he says, I've got two th more things I want to announce. Okay, okay. 
you the tears coming down the audience's eyes. Everybody's just anticipating, anticipating what, what's going to happen. Okay, Team Fortress 3 is coming out next year. We're going to release all these games in one big mega bundle. Coming with the HTC Vive. You, and a Steam Machine. You buy an HTC Vive Steam Machine bundle, you get these games all in. Okay, that's cool. Everybody's, there's another three game. It's happening. It's happening. Valve, you know, it's, it's the sign of the end times. And then, just as he's getting ready to walk off the stage, he announces a shared universe movie deal. So he's already been talking about J.J. Abrams, right? A shared collaborative universe, a VR style movie franchise with these four big names. That's a wild card. I and mean, all this shit's a wild card. So that, wouldn't that just destroy the internet? Wouldn't everybody's heads collectively explode? The stock market crashes, tidal waves, tsunamis, earthquakes, UFOs. They all come down after Gabe Newell's big news. Then all of a sudden you see Gabe Newell just rise, rise. He's, remember, he's got these wings now. He's got this golden aura. He rises to the heavens in the PC Master Race. Sure, their true power. <laughs> I think that'd be hilarious, but you know, that's more that's more of <laughs> that that would be comedy. But I think that's what's gonna happen. I and I apologize, it's 27 minutes here, and we're talking about these this stuff. So uh, guys, thank you so much for checking us out. Uh be sure to check out next week. I have you know, well not next week, maybe later this week, and I'll talk about a little bit about what has been going on in my life um, and I'll try not to make it sad but you'll probably will be you'll probably see me bawling my eyes out um, but this is what I think as for E3 as a collective I think all these things may or may not happen and these are just things I'm guessing on and hopefully hopefully you guys really really like like this and hit subscribe I really hope um, this channel takes off, and I thank you so much for all the support so far. Um, as always, my name is Panto6. Be sure to hit like and subscribe, and I love you guys. Thank you so much.